Hi, I'm Joe Connolly with Dave Heath, the founder of Bombus Socks, who found a way to make socks interesting and fun, and he's challenging the big clothing companies now in the sale of socks. Dave, what was the opening that you saw? So back in 2011, uh, I was working for a media startup, and you know, I'd always entrepreneurship was was something that always kind of ran through my blood. My dad was an entrepreneur. I went to school for entrepreneurism, um, and so I was always kind of looking for business ideas. And I happened to be at this media company. I was combing Facebook one day, and I came across this post that somebody had put up that said socks were the number one most requested clothing item at homeless shelters. And it kind of stopped me in my tracks. You know, I, I didn't I didn't immediately look at it and go, oh my God, there's a business here. I kind of was intrigued and saddened by this fact. And I, I found myself over the next few weeks just telling everybody that, you know, I encountered with, I said, did you know that socks were the most requested? And seeing the same kind of response uh, that, that I had was like, no, I didn't, but that's really fascinating and kind of, you know, sad. Um, and so, you know, at the same time, because I was so interested in entrepreneurism, I was following, uh, you know, stories like Tom's, right? Tom's shoes. They they were in their fifth year of business and and really growing. Uh, and Warby Parker had just launched about six months prior. And I really felt like there was a lot of momentum behind this one for one social impact give back business model. And that's kind of when the light bulb went off, and I was like, huh, maybe maybe what what Tom's is doing with shoes and what Warby Parker is doing with eyewear. I could do it with socks. I mean, I don't think anybody ever grows up being like, you know what I really want to do? I really want to start a sock company. Um, but that was kind of the immediate opportunity. And, you know, it kind of snowballed from there. I, I, I knew that just the mission alone wasn't going to be the driver uh, for, for this business. I, I had to create a product that was truly differentiated in the marketplace. And, you know, so I started trying every sock in the, you know, that I found on the shelves and tried to understand what the difference was between, you know, a 12 pack of socks for $10 and a single pair of socks for $34 and really tried to figure out, you know, the, the technological differences and, and what separated those two categories. And the more and more I got, you know, involved in, in, the, in the industry, I really started to understand that the premium side of the market, which was typically focused a niche endemic categories like running and skiing and hiking and basketball uh, had all of these technology improvements in their in the premium category, but none of that was coming down to more of the mass market everyday type of sock that, that you and I would wear to work. Um, so once I pulled out these technology features, I you're tried... now thinking I may start a business around. This. Oh like, yeah, to yeah. be doing this research. Totally. You're now seriously. The, 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 okay. the wheels are moving. Okay. Um, I was starting to invest a ton of time into right. this, and uh, and that's about the time where I was like, wow, there's a real opportunity in the marketplace to take this innovation up here and bring it down to the mass market. And the opening was somewhere between one dollar socks. And those forty, fifty, sixty dollars socks that totally. we see in yeah. prices. Yep. A, a big opening, right? Huge, huge. There was really no one playing in kind of the ten to twelve dollar market that took all of the innovation and technology of a running sock, but then made it for the everyday consumer. So what did you? Okay, now, now you've done this research. What was the first thing you did? So the first thing I did was, so I grew up as a child with ADD. I had hypersensitivity issues. So toe seams were like drove me insane. Like, I don't know if you have kids and you like try to put a pair of socks on a kid and they're like, but the toe seam. So my first thing was like, we've got to eliminate that. We've got to get rid of it. Then we created our own arch support, our comfort footbed. You're I hired hated... consultants now? No, 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 I'm just. You're doing this? Yeah, I'm just doing this. I contacted some factories. Um, you know, I was like, can, you know, I'd, I'd take one sock and I'd be like, I really like the way this sock stays up on your leg, but I really like the way this sock feels. And I really like the way that this sock wraps around your foot and I kind of Frankensteined all these things together I had no manufacturing experience whatsoever I was truly coming at it from the consumers mindset and I think that that's what gave us the differentiating you know component in our product was that I didn't come from manufacturing so I wasn't coming at this from being like well the margin has to be this and it's you know we've got to make it out of this because this is more affordable I really just came at it from creating the best product possible and that's what we ended up with now today How's business? What are you doing? 
Business is fantastic. I mean, I truly wake up every day and, and feel incredibly blessed for you know the success of it all. Um, I'm surrounded by an incredible team. We're about 50 people right now. Uh, we're only four years old, but we just crossed the $50, $50 million revenue mark. We've donated our six and a half millionth pair of socks um, to the homeless community. It's just, yeah, I mean, it's incredible. 50 million in yeah, revenues in, in four, four years. years. Aside from producing a quality product, how did you get to that type of revenue level so fast? I mean, social media, marketing, everything. What, what made it happen so fast? Yeah, it's, a, it's really not just one thing, right? It's, it's kind of the, 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 a combination of a lot of things. First, I tell every entrepreneur I talk to, without a good product, you're not gonna right. succeed, right? And so, you know, we had a great product, it resonates with the consumer, we get a ton of word of mouth, um, you know, as you even know, one of your good friends, you know, had, had told you about our company, and which is why I'm sitting here. Um, we have people that are just so passionate around the brand, but at scale, we wanted to kind of take our story, you know, the, auth the authenticity that, that we have in our brand, why we started this business for the charity, you know, aspect first, and then kind of found the opportunity in the marketplace. And we've just done, I think, a really good job of telling that story. And then our marketing team, who's fantastic at, at digital marketing through social media, um, you know, podcasts, radio, television, uh, getting that story out there on a, on a mass scale. Final question on this point. Your first sale was to get some socks into a store. Did you put an ad online and no. see if anyone hit? What was the first decent sale. So the, the first, uh, you know, when we started the business, we, we really wanted to kind of run it as a proof of concept. And so we launched the business on Indiegogo, which is a crowdfunding platform, uh, similar to Kickstarter and, and a bunch of the other ones. And so we knew that we had a great story. And this platform allowed us to create a three minute video that we could then share with our friends and family. And just put it out there and see if people resonate with the mission, see if people resonate with the you know, product features that we were solving, the, the problems that we were solving in the socks. Um, we did a hundred and just under $150,000 in our first 30 days, uh, just through kind of word of mouth and the momentum that you know, a crowdfunding campaign can, can create. Wow, yeah. you, so you knew within 30 days this actually might work? We knew within the first 24 hours. We had set a goal of $15,000 and we did about $22,000 in our first day. And was that because of the combination of the text on the product and the photo of the product? Because they're, they're fun looking socks. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a great design. I, I truly, I, I, think, I think the initial success was driven by the fact that for, for the two and a half years that I had spent research and developing, I mean, anybody that had ears heard me talk about, uh, you know, I'm starting a sock company. I mean, people on the airplane, you know, people in a restaurant, anytime I had a free minute and a, and a willing listener, I was telling them about this company and I'd take their information oh. and, you know, I'd say, can I email you when I launch my campaign? And so I'd get all the, you know, I still today get emails from people who are like, I remember when you told me about this in the airport lounge, you know, that you were starting this funny sock company and here you are, you know, on television and radio shows and yeah it's uh you know it's it's truly the hustle right it's like i i mean anybody i just blasted it out to everybody and the true the people that 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 supported me in the beginning you know i owe it all to because they're the ones that helped me get to here today but I've never heard of somebody who's taken people's contact information before the business it's a even sale. began. It's, it's a, a sale, sale man it's ask a sale. for the order if you ask for the order to sell yet, ask for the email exactly what do those 50 people do now in your offer? There's nobody knitting socks, right? No, no, no. no. We, have, uh, we have a couple of different factories manufacturing our product. Overseas? Um, overseas. Yep. Uh, we've got, we're opening up one here in the U.S. We've got one in Canada. Uh, we really try to focus on the factories that produce the best quality. Um, so our running socks are produced in one factory. Our ski socks are produced in another. Our dress socks are produced in another. We really try to find the manufacturers that have had decades of expertise expertise producing these products um, with the best yarns, the best technologies, and produced that way. On your website, you have socks for men, socks for women, four packs for kids, six packs for kids, socks for skiers, socks for snowboarders. Yeah. How do you come up with all these 
different packages. You know, we, we talk to our customers, um, and we, you know, I think one of the benefits of running a direct to consumer company is that you have that dialogue with your customers directly, right? And so we're getting feedback from the customer service department, and kids purely launched off the fact that we had parents that were coming back and they're like, I love your product. My kids steal our socks, but they're too big for them. How do, you know, can you create products for our kids? And so that was how kids started. I happen to be a really big snowboarder. I've been for 25 years. So ski and snowboard was a little bit of a selfish play, um, but it quickly took off. We've got merino wool socks that, you know, for these cold days in the winter, um, you know, and again, that was something that, you know, out of the team, we found people who are like, I love our socks, but what do I wear in the winter when it gets a little bit colder? I'm like, wow, well, merino wool, great, let's make those. Um, so we're really kind of innovating based off of the feedback that we're getting both from our team internally, but, but from the customer dialogue that we have as well. What advice would you give to people who want to do something in their area along the great lines that you have done? What would you tell them? I think the best piece of advice that I was given, and it's the piece of advice that I try to pass down um, in the early days, is focus. Uh, I think you know when when you're just starting, there's so many different directions you can go into. There's so many you know opportunities that you can chase after, um, but putting those blinders on and and remembering you know. I'm going to stick to the thing that I know really, really, really well and I'm really, really good at. So, you know, I remember about six months into the business, I was like, oh, we, you know, we've got to start producing underwear and T-shirts and sweatpants and sweatshirts. And, uh, you know, one of my mentors who was early on at Tom's, and, you know, I was talking with him and he's an advisor for the business. And he goes, we sold one style of shoe in four colors for the first three years of our business. And that resonated with me so much. And he said, you got to think about the brands that you really respect, right? Nike started with running shoes. Lululemon started with yoga pants. Under Armour started with base layers. They didn't have all of these product categories on day one, right? And so it's much easier to start and build a brand when you're known for one thing really, really well. And I even say we, we had tons of opportunities over the last few years to go into wholesale. But we were so, we know that we were so good at, at driving customers online and, and creating that story and, and, you know, relationship with those customers that you know, we're growing at 400% year over year online. Why would we divert any of our attention to go chase after an opportunity that we don't have any experience in, we don't have any know-how? We're just starting to launch into wholesale, but, you know, here we are four and a half years later, right? It, 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 you don't have to do everything on day one. Dave Heath of Bomba Socks, you are the first person in my life who has had me interested talking about socks <laughs> for 15 <laughs> minutes, and we could still go on for longer. Thank you so much, Thank Joe. You. I appreciate Great. it. Congratulations. Thank you very much.